Hello, I'm Jonathan M 0 jsx and I've decided to come outside today just for a bit of a different backdrop for the next uh, few minutes. And last year, about this time last year in fact, Yesu announced what was then called the FTX-1F. And in the last week, I'm sure you haven't missed it at all, uh, Yesu have now announced some more details about this new radio and um, the fact that there's actually two versions of this radio. There is the field version, which is the one we kind of already knew about, and there's also the Optima, this uh, new 100 watt version of the same radio. Let's break it down, let's talk about why you might buy either one, and my thoughts about why actually the Optima is a pretty good deal. So let's start with the field, which is a 10 watt, HF through to 70 centimeter radio. 10 watts when it's plugged into an external DC power source, six watts on its internal supplied battery pack. Uh, much the same as an IC705 if you want to draw comparisons. Uh, the IC705 does of course only do five watts on its internal battery, but what's one watt between friends. Uh, it is designed for going out portable, whether it's designed for POTA or SOTA or any other kind of OTA that you want to do. Uh, put, put it in a backpack and take it out with you wherever you want to go. Uh, priced at $15.99, it's pretty much the same ballpark as something like an IC705. Of course, it scores over the IC705 for the fact that it also includes four meters which we know that ICOM tried to do on the 705, but were unable to actually make it happen by the time it came to shipping the 705. But we're five years later, times have moved on. It also has USB-C charging and also for data communications. The list goes on. I'm sure you can look up the, the write-up and the brochure about what the uh, FTX-1 field does. We're not gonna get bogged down in that too much right now. Because where it gets exciting is when we start looking at the FTX-1 Optima. Let's say the FTX-1 Optima is priced at £2,069. And where does it differ from the field? Well, it's the 100 watt model. So you still get the same field head. You get the same base radio as you do with the field. So you take it out portable if you want to. It has everything the same as the field. When you get back to the shack or maybe back to the car, you plug it into the supplied SPA1 amplifier, and there you've now got a 100 watt radio on HF and six meters, and a 50 watt radio on four, two, and 70 sems. With that SPA1 attached as well, you also have ATAS capability. So you can use the ATAS 120A antenna for going mobile with. And it also has an inbuilt tuner as well. So if you wanted to use, if you wanted to use this in the uh, in the shack and have it as your main shack radio, well you can do because you've got an internal tuner to boot as well. Again, 100 watts from uh, a DC power source would be required, and it'll be the same as any other 100 watt radio needing a 30 amp supply there or thereabouts in order to drive it. And of course, you get all the same benefits. It's a USB C for interface. Uh, and you still got everything in one box. Now it seems to me that Yates have tried to be a bit clever with this radio because not only have they tried to replace one radio, arguably the FT817 or FT818, they've also looked to replace the FT857 with this radio for the fact that uh, it's 100 watts out on HF and 6, 50 watts out on 2 and 70, supporting the ATAS antenna. And arguably, they've also tried to replace the FT991 and 991A for the fact the radio includes C4 FM and a waterfall display as well on uh, the VHF UHF bands. Why do I think this radio is such a good deal for over £2,000? Now, let's not beat around the bush. £2,000 or £2,069 is a lot of money, and I'm not going to say that everybody is going to go out and buy one of these radios because that's obviously not the case. And I also don't think that you're going to go and rush out and buy one if you've already got a number of HF radios. And I'm in that camp. I have an IC7300 for my main shack radio when ICOM UK are not loaning me the IC7610. And I also have an IC705 for those portable operations. So I've already got, apart from VHF, UHF, higher power, but I've already got everything I need 
in the radios I've got. But if I wanted to downsize, if I wanted to sell my 7300 and my 705 and replace it with one radio, well, the FTX One Optima would be a really compelling choice because it's that 100 watt radio I want at home as my base station, but it's also that small portable 10 watt QRP radio that I'd want when I'm out and about. And that's hard to pass up for £2,069 because if you were to buy an IC7300 and an IC705, well, that's going to cost you nearer to £3,000, if not a little bit over. We're getting both here for just over £2,000. So that's a, that's a saving, if you want to think of it like that. Is it going to be for everyone? Of course not. It's, it's going to be limited by the size of the fact that it's the main control panel is designed for being portable. So that's going to be fairly smaller compared to things like, I don't know, an, an FT710 or a FTDX10 or even the IC7300. It is going to be a bit more compact. But say, it's two radios in one, if you want to think of it like that. I don't know whether I'm going to get my chance to play with one. I, I could ask Yesu. So Yesu, if you're watching, please, can I play with one? I'd like to, but I think they're going to sell in their vast quantities. I'm not going to put a number on that, but I think they're going to sell really well, simply because it's a one-size-fits-all radio uh, that not only is, as I say, with the Optima 100 watts out on, on HF and 6, and 50 watts out on 4, 2 and 70, but also it's got SSB on those uh, VHF, UHF bands as well. So really good if you wanted to go out uh, and play maybe in the UK AC contests here in the UK in the RSGB series. Let me know what you think. Uh, I think it's a great deal. I think that uh, if I didn't already own the 7300 and the 705, I would certainly be looking to, to put the uh, FTX1 Optima uh, into my arsenal. And I can see that that's going to be the case for a lot of people. I'm also interested to know from you, if you've already got a 705, whether you're looking to replace your 705 with the FTX1, maybe the field version, is the draw of four metres maybe of particular interest or the fact that it's draw receive, is that of particular interest to you and would make you give up your 705 for the FTX1? Interesting on that one. It's also worth mentioning what the FTX1 doesn't have in either variant. So from what I can glean, GPS uh, is an optional extra. It requires a little dongle to be plugged into the side of the unit as a GPS antenna. Uh, so that's a bit of a downside um, when the radio does support APRS, but it looks like GPS is not an inbuilt thing. And the same with Bluetooth. Uh, you can add a Bluetooth module to get Bluetooth functionality uh, through a headset. Uh, but that is a, a module you've got to install in the radio. It doesn't come as standard. Also, it doesn't appear to include any kind of Wi-Fi capability. So unlike with the IC705, where you can remote control that radio over Wi-Fi, looks like the FTX1 does not going to support that kind of operation. I'm not sure how many people do do that with the IC705. I know I do and have to done with, with mine, uh, but I'm not sure how widespread that particularly is in a portable uh, HF to 77's radio. I suspect I'm in the uh, minority of users who have done that with their radio. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, please. Let's have a bit of a conversation. If you've liked this video, there's a button specifically for that. If you haven't, there's another one that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button and also click that notification bell and you'll be told whenever I upload a new video. There's another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you're like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.